guys, my name is Calvin, and you're listening to Pastor Chats. Let's go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the podcast. My name is Calvin Barnes, and I'm your host for the journey today. And uh, looking forward to spending some time together with you today. So let's talk about what is Pastor Chats. Pastor Chats is just an opportunity for myself to spend time with other pastors and leaders, asking questions, hopefully, that you would ask or want to ask, or maybe you don't even know to ask some of the questions that we're going to ask uh, on the podcast, but hopefully these questions will help you grow uh, if you're a pastor, if you're a leader, uh, or if uh, you aspire to those things, you feel called to those things, hopefully that will help you to grow. Just to give you a little background on myself, my wife Bryn and I, we have three children, Cohen, Cannon, and Caroline. And uh, we've been married almost 19 years, and uh, we've been in ministry uh, for most of that in some form. In 2017, we launched our campus of New Life Church, Arkansas, in BB, Arkansas. We're having a blast. God has very much blessed our church and our campus and our city, and we're very thankful uh, to be a part of what God's doing in Arkansas, and it's a ton of fun. And I also uh, do a little bit of traveling and uh, do a little bit of consulting uh, outside of my pastoring work. I have a background in audio engineering and touring, spent years living in Nashville, Tennessee, and I still love Nashville very much. And I'm thankful for my friends and chosen family there in the time that we had in that great city. And so uh, today, on our very first podcast, we will be talking with our Pine Bluff campus pastor, Matt Mosler. Many of you may know Matt from television uh, here in Arkansas for years, and he and his wife, Camille, are doing an amazing job of leading uh, not only the church uh, there in Pine Bluff, but they're also doing an amazing job serving their city. And uh, I think for me, one of the things that I'm passionate about as a pastor is not only am I a good citizen of my city personally, but that our church is also a great citizen of the city and that we serve our city, not just uh, to grow our church, but to be a good citizen of our city and just to serve our city because we love our city and we're a part of it. And so uh, we're going to be talking today with Matt Mosler about pastoring your city. This is going to be a two-part episode. I'm looking forward to spending this time with you today. Here we go. Of course, the first one had to be with the broadcast professional. <laughs> yeah, well, I wish you'd have come more prepared, Calvin, honestly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> For real, yeah. <laughs> Act like you've been there before. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but no, so you know, Tyler and I talked about these just, we just wanted to have conversations. Yeah. Like, uh, we just want to talk, and hopefully um, we could bring people along. Uh, just in our conversations, just let them, you know, let them into our world, if you will. Yeah. And our uh, world is pastors. So pastors. this is, for, yeah. So pastors come into a new city. How do, how do you reach your city? How do you learn about your city? How do you minister to your city? Right. Yeah. And so, you know, something that I know at our campus in BB that we talk about a lot is um, that, that we love our city. And I hear you talk about Pine Bluff all the time. Um, uh, in the same way I feel about BB. Mm-hmm. Like we, we just love our city. Mm-hmm. Like we're, we didn't uh, told our church recently, we didn't come just to plant a church. We came to love a city, which is, is, uh, is maybe two sides of the same coin, but not the exact same thing. And so maybe before we get into all that, why don't you sort of give us a, uh, maybe the cliff notes version of, just who is Matt Mosler? <laughs> uh, and just kind of let let us get to know you a little bit uh, for those maybe that haven't been in Arkansas 
for that long or maybe never saw you do what you do, you know, just, uh, just let us into that. Well, uh, boy, I, I, we, I don't know if we have enough time for that little, uh, I mean, I, I guess the best, the best place to start is, uh, ever since I was a young and I had a passion for ministry, mm-hmm. I just, I wanted to help people. That's mm-hmm. a, just my personality. I see people in need. I want to help them. Yeah. And, uh, but I also wanted to be really famous, you know, of course. I'm gonna be, you know, so I, Who doesn't? uh, I, uh, I like to entertain. I like to make people laugh. I like, so when I went to college, uh, I, broadcasting was, was way high up there on the list of major. I don't know what I wanted to major in when I went to college, but I went down there and sure. here's a list of majors. Well, I didn't want to be an aeronautical engineer and I didn't want to be an architect, <laughs> but broadcasting was near the top and it looked like fun and it may help me get chicks. You know, yeah. really that's why we Which do anything point, right? we do. You know, so <laughs> I need all the help I can get. I'm not a good looking dude, you know, so well, that's anything why I grabbed a guitar. that I can add to my repertoire, you know, <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. So I, I went to the University of Alabama and majored in broadcasting and started working in television before I graduated. I was just really blessed to get that job and um, and worked in uh, – and I thought that was going to be it. I thought, mm-hmm. I'm, you know, one day I'm going to broadcast the Olympics. You know, I'm going to be doing – I thought initially I'd be doing sports like every red-blooded American man. Yeah. <laughs> and I gravitate. So I did a news reporter for a couple of years, moved to Jackson, Mississippi, where I started doing the weather and hosted a morning show. Well, hosting morning shows was just perfect for my personality. I got sure. to I got to interview people who were doing things in the community. I got to help bring uh, shed some light on some good things that were going on, letting people know about some of the positive things, trying to right. get some help for some of these folks who were ministering to the community in some form or fashion. I just like mm. the morning shows. Plus, you can make people laugh and. Yeah. And uh, and then went to Austin, Texas, and did the same thing there for three years. And love Austin. Uh, Austin's a great town uh, for single people or <laughs> or or married with no children. Uh, but for us, it was just it was a strange mix. I, I, I got you. I loved the. Uh, I, I I loved the attitude of the people in Austin. Austin was one of these communities where. If you wanted to start a business or start an outreach or a ministry or you had any kind of crazy idea, it mm-hmm. seemed like the entire community got behind you to do it. You wow. know, they would support you. They would it, just a very uh, entrepreneurial kind of place, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of music, a lot of uh, creativity. And well, then we came to Arkansas and there wasn't that vibe. Now, <laughs> Arkansas was different. It's yeah. just you didn't you had to kind of fight Mm-hmm. to achieve in Arkansas. Mm-hmm. And in Austin, it felt easier because you'd had people behind you patting you on the back, go get them, you know. Austin, I mean, Arkansas, you had to fight for it. So consequently, the people who are successful in Arkansas can be successful anywhere in the world because they fight for it, you know. Mm-hmm. And so you have some really talented, high achievers in in this state because they don't necessarily have the entire community of entrepreneurs behind it. It's getting better. I've seen, you know, it's, yeah. I I, I think with this young crowd getting older that then this, this young generation has a lot more of that entrepreneurial. I want to do it. I want to build, I want to, so it's getting better. Um, yeah, I agree. So I moved from Austin to got the job in, uh, at KATV, the, uh, ABC affiliate in Little Rock hosting their morning show. And honestly, I thought I was going to be here for, you know, fulfill my three-year contract. And then I was going to New York. I mean, I was that talented. Yeah. Right. I was going to be on New the- New York to- City. I was on the Today <laughs> Show. I was on Good Morning America. It was, this was just, I didn't, I, you know, I, I didn't even know where Arkansas was. I never thought I'd ever drive through Arkansas. Yeah. Um, wasn't on the game plan, yeah. you know, when you're mapping out your future. But we came totally here and that. there was something about this state that we just loved and fell in love with it. And mm-hmm. it's specifically Southeast Arkansas mm-hmm. because it was- um, it was an area where there was people. There were people in need, mm-hmm. and and I want to help people. Sure. And so I always gravitated toward here. So, long, you know, kind of a backstory. When I, ever since I've been in television, I use the platform of celebrity to get into schools, into churches, into groups to share my faith because mm-hmm. I faith is very important to me. I think you know, there's only one way to get to heaven; it's through Jesus. That's where you find the abundant life, and right. I want to help people get there. Yep. Again, I want to help people. So I st- I started speaking in churches and ministries and stuff. To and then when I moved to to Arkansas, it got to the point where I was speaking 150 times a year from wow. coast to coast. I was doing men's retreats and revivals all over the place and. So we had this growing ministry that was here, and 
one of the first things we did, I'll, I'll cut this short because I don't know, we don't have you know that much time. No, <laughs> um, we we did a mission trip to uh, to Dermot, Arkansas, and I gathered wow. a bunch of people. We went down to Dermot. We we did some work down there. We did a couple mission trips down there. We did some mission trips to Lake Village, to uh, mm -hmm. Eudora. Mm -hmm. It was just something about Southeast Arkansas that that drew me to this region. Yeah, and uh, and so. After 30 years in well, 28 years in TV in 2014, we finally left, joined the staff of New Life. Mm -hmm. I thought this was going to be a nice little, you know, semi-retirement kind of job. I mean, you people only work one day a week, you know, so <laughs> I can. Oh, yeah. the great lie yeah, of the minister. Sure. Yeah, sure. So and uh, and as it turned out that, man, you people are crazy, man. You were, there's It's a 24-7 gig. And yep. So I had, there was this big learning curve that I, when I first started at New Life, mm -hmm. but. Then, you know, New Life is one of these churches where we have multi-site campuses, and and then they started talking about, well, we would like you, talking about me, we'd like you to be a pastor in one of these churches that we have. And mm -hmm. um, and when they told me that, Camille and I both knew that's not where I needed to be. Um, dum, dum, dum. <laughs> so I, I told them, I said, if you want me to be a pastor, I want to go to Pine Bluff. Because if you looked at the map, New Life Church was building churches from central Arkansas northwest. Everything yeah. was moving northwest. Nothing yeah. was in the Delta. Yeah. And Pine Bluff is the capital of the Delta. And right. if you want to reach southeast Arkansas, if you want to reach the nearly million people that are in this region that are in poverty and want and need and that are being held – that are being enslaved by the enemy, mm -hmm. you have to reach Pine Bluff. Mm -hmm. Because at, every all roads go through Pine Bluff to get northwest. You have to go through this region. It's it's a it's an incredibly historical city, yep. but it has been uh, decimated by the enemy. Mm -hmm. So I said, if you really want me to be a pastor, I want to go to Pine Bluff. And they went, <laughs> really? Oh, wait, mm -hmm. you're serious? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. And, and so yeah. to their credit, you know, I don't think this was on their game plan initially either. But, you know, to their credit, they said, hey, you know, the thing I love about this church is they don't. They don't look at the map and say, we need a church here. We need a church here. Let's find somebody to pastor. Mm -hmm. We develop leaders and whatever God speaks to your heart, we want to get behind that because you have to have in anything that you do, you have to have people of passion. Yep. You've got to have a passion for what you're Absolutely. doing. And so we had a passion to come here and they, they jumped in with both feet and we could not have opened this church and, and started this church and had the impact we had, had we not had the, you know, the behemoth of New Life Church behind us. Oh, that's the same thing with us and BB. I mean, the, the exact same thing. Uh, <laughs> I remember Pastor Rick, he looked at me, he said, Calvin, BB? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> I said, yeah. yeah, I know. Yes, BB. Yeah, I can't, yeah. I can't get over it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so I understand the, the feeling of that. And, I, but I think, for me, like when I talk to other guys who want to plant a church, first of all, I try to talk them out of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and well, that's that's, a, that's don't overlook that because yeah. that's he, I, and when I tell people I yep. have this crazy idea, I want you to talk me out of it. Mm -hmm. I want you to challenge me because I I'm such an optimist and and I everything I know it's gonna work. It's yeah. You know, talk me out of it. And, Absolutely. And we had a lot of people try to talk us out of it. I mean, people look at you and they go, why would you want to move to Pine Bluff? Mm -hmm. And I still get that question. Yeah. So Do you yeah, know what I, th you're doing? I, I think that's important, but <laughs> no, it is. If Absolutely. God plants that seed and if he gives you that passion, uh, man, jump behind it, bro. Cause that's where. Yeah. A hundred percent. You've got to know that, you know, and that's why I try to talk guys out of it because there are those days, mm -hmm. sometimes those weeks or months or we could even go so far as to say seasons mm -hmm. where the only thing you have to fall back on, at least in your feelings, is, okay, here's what I'm feeling, but I remember mm -hmm. that God said and that I know beyond any doubt that I'm, I obeyed the Lord and I'm where yeah. I'm supposed to be. Yeah. So it may look like this right now, yeah. <laughs> but and I may feel like this right now, but... At the end of the day, I know that God called me there, and I couldn't shake it. Yeah, and so we jumped in, you know. And I think you've got to have that. Mm -hmm. um, you've got to have that to hold on to, because there's so many opportunities to feel like you should bail. So the first thing you try to do is talk them out of it. What? what yeah. What's the next thing? <sighs> That's a good question. I mean, because if I get to that point, I'm kind of shocked. Yeah. <laughs> they, they were yeah. still in love. 
you know, with their city. Um, I asked, you know, one thing that, that took us on an interesting journey was Bryn coming on board, mm-hmm. you know? So was she, uh, was she on board when you first had the desire to open a campus and baby? She was on board before me. See, my wife wasn't. Yeah. Um, and so when I said, if you want us to do a church, you want to go to Pine Bluff. Well, um, I, I was here. I knew God was calling me. here. Yeah. I've, been, I've always been very sensitive to the Holy Spirit and I mm-hmm. just feel it. And I, you know, I mean, I'm. You're a feeler. It, well, it's a long, st- I mean, I, I had to, I, we don't have time to get into it, but I had to, God had to take me on a journey of failure to teach me how to live in faith. Oh boy, I understand you that. Know? One. And yes. so I had to I yeah. had to step out in what I thought he wanted me to do and I failed miserably. Mm-hmm. And it was through that failure that God sort of burns away the chaff and he says, "Okay, here's where I want you. I want you desperate. Mm-hmm. And if I can get you desperate and on your knees, then we can do something. But if yep. you try to do if you try to do my work, you're where you're going to fail. There's yes. a difference between God's work and God's will. Mm-hmm. And I want to do I want to help people, but mm-hmm. that may not be where I'm supposed to be. And so I knew, yep. I knew I was supposed to be here. Camille, you know, we're in our fifties now. So we're in the, the, you know, what I, the, the third season of life, mm-hmm. you know, the legacy period, this is where mm-hmm. you're supposed to slow down, enjoy your grandkids. And, <laughs> and so Pine Bluff was just not on the radar, man, yeah. you know? And, and so it. I said, we want to come down here. We want to spend the rest of our life, uh, pouring ourselves out and helping people and, and making a difference and leaving a legacy. And, mm-hmm. So I took her down here, and the first time she comes down here, I mean, it's it's winter, um, so everything's kind of gray and rainy, and there were buildings that had fallen down in Main Street in Pine Bluff, and they just put police tape around it, and it, they didn't have the money to clean it up. So Man. it looked like you were coming into a war zone. Wow. Well, she comes down here, sees these abandoned, dilapidated, fallen down buildings, and just starts crying, you know. Well, then we just kept praying, God, I, and I told her, I said, I can't come down here unless God's calling you Mm -hmm. in my, in my life in ministry. Um, I've done a lot. I've taken a lot of steps of faith and just grabbed her along. You know, Mm -hmm. you are my wife, goodbye city life, green acres. Here we come. (laughs) I'm going, you're going with me by golly. Yep. Uh, but I said, I can't come down here to do the mission here in Pine Bluff unless God's calling you too. I can't focus on that and Mm -hmm. still try to to help you out because I need you because yep. I know I'm going to go through those seasons of discouragement. Yep. And that was, that was new. So the first time she comes down, she's crying. I'm like, Oh Lord, what are we going to do now? And, <laughs> and, but I just kept praying, God, you yeah. know, I know you're calling me. I just change your, change your heart. And it seemed like every time we came down, it would be, it, her, her vision would change, you know, mm. and she, and by the pretty soon, you know, it was probably, you know, sometime around September where she said, okay, this is where we need to be. Mm-hmm. And it was like the week, uh, the, the week that they called you and me and these other pastors on stage. Yeah. And said that she was not decided until that week when they wow. brought us up on stage and says, these are going to be our new campus I remember pastors. That. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And, and so I think that's, I think it's important. I don't think it's necessarily a requirement and I may get in trouble with some that your wife mm. is on the same page with you when you take steps of faith. Cause sure. I think there's a growth curve for everybody. And that may be part of the, and that could work both may, ways. Be part too. of the season yeah. um, is like, we, we have a Christian retreat center called crosshairs, which is a 14,000 square foot, three story, former duck lodge. We turned into a Christian retreat center. She was not in favor of that. We, we got, you know, a, a $1.3 million building and 60 acres. We were able to buy it for $200,000. Wow. And now we do a hundred plus retreats a year there. She was not in favor because we didn't have any money. You know, sure. <laughs> uh, but now you look back in retrospect, and yeah. you can see that you know she she gets it now. And yeah, we but we couldn't do that here, and mm-hmm. so we had that was that season where we I just had to step back. If she if you don't call her God, then I ain't going, and I'll for I'll, sure I'll be patient and obedient. And patience is not a virtue with me. <laughs> yeah, huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, me either, bro. So, me either yeah. at all. I get it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's well. I was thinking. Good on Camille for being willing to entertain something that she felt so strongly oh, yeah. not excited about. Mm-hmm. I mean, to me, that says a ton about her her character and y'all's mm-hmm. relationship. I think that's I think that's amazing. It's something you said um, a, a, about how God works and His will. Uh, what I realized for me, and I've, I've told our campus this several times recently, is that uh, my version of God's will for me had to die so that his version of his oh, yeah. will for me could live. Yeah. 
Right. And and that was that was me because I'm a go getter. We're yeah. all go getters. All yeah. of us campus pastors, pastors in general, are typically go getters. And and so it's like, oh, you spoke God. Okay, I'm gonna go make yeah. it happen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, let, let's go get it. Uh, I got I got the word. I'm good. Let's go. Uh, I'll get it done. Uh, thanks for making sure mm-hmm. I knew what I was supposed to do. And then if you're like me, you jump off in and. God's like, oh, isn't that sweet? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. good try, buddy. Well, I, uh, I'm still learning that lesson. I heard uh, Pastor Rick's Pastor Roy Stockstill uh, mm-hmm. when we were at, or Larry Stockstill say when we had a campus pastor meeting, <clears throat> he was talking about the seven giants in his life, and the mm-hmm. first one was his father, um, uh, Brother Roy, and he and he said the reason he loved one of the traits that he took from his father that he tries to make his own is is humility. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, humility. I'm, I'm, I'm the most humble guy. And I don't need to listen. I'll, I'll take some notes, but the, you know, yeah. I, I got the humility thing handled, right? Yeah. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm semi serious, but when you're in, when you're, yeah. a, when you're in television and people recognize you, you begin to get an inflated sense of who you are. Sure. And so I had to deal with my pride a long time ago, and I felt like I had that under control. Sure. And, um, or at least in the proper perspective, but. So he gets up there and he's talking about his father's humility, and he, he made this comment that I've never forgotten. It's, it's one of my life values now. He said, where there is pride, there is no rest. Hmm. And boy, when he said that, I felt literally like someone just hit me in the nose. And wow. I looked around to see if anybody else could see the blood. You know I, mean? <laughs> I just got that. Ah! Because when he said that, I wasn't sleeping at night. Mm. Uh, I would wake up in the middle of the night if I did fall asleep, and I, and I could, and my mind was just going 100 different places places and it was just it was it was a sports car redlining and, and it couldn't mm-hmm. get in gear because i'm thinking about all these things i need to do i you call me to pine bluff there's a lot of need here so i got to get this mm-hmm. group going i got to mobilize that group i got to get these people yep. uh, find these leaders i got to get this ministry started i got i got i got i got i got totally understand and, that. and to the point where i'm not sleeping well if there is pride there is no rest i ain't getting no rest and so god i mean in that in that sanctuary, at that moment, I hit my knees and God says, you need to get your pride under control because what wow. you're trying to do is you're trying to do my work your way. And basically, he told me in no uncertain terms, I don't need you. I don't need you to do what I want to do down here. It's mm, good, bro. You know, I want to use you. Yeah. But I don't need you. Look, I created everything out of nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you are not that special. Let's get some perspective yeah. here, big so boy. I don't, yeah. I don't need you to do this. And it's like. You know, Ozzie Smith, the great shortstop for the Cardinals, you know, after, you know, World Series and making mm-hmm. all these amazing plays at the end of the game, they didn't interview his glove. You know, his glove was in the locker room yep. and sitting up in the locker collecting dust. They interviewed Ozzie because yep. the glove didn't make the play. It was the master's hand in the glove that made the glove so mm-hmm. special. So God said, I don't need you to do this. I want to use you. Yeah. I want you to share in what I'm doing. I want you to finish the work that I've started. I want you to be a part of this work. And the only way you're going to do that is if you get this in proper perspective and understand that I got to do this through you. And from that moment, I mean, I've always prayed, but I started getting on my knees and praying. I started putting myself physically in a position of of humility and getting on my face and saying, God, empty me of this pride. I know you gave me this pride. Mm Mm-hmm which is one of these double-edged swords. God gave yeah. men specifically this amount, this testosterone, this pride, so that we could build and create and be. Right. But it can also cross the line into, I got to do this and look how great I am. And aren't you glad I'm on your team? And Absolutely. So it was, a, it was a physical humbling of myself saying, God, empty me of this. I, I want to be used by you. And mm-hmm. my workload has not slowed down one bit. Mm-hmm. But my peace has increased because if it gets done, it gets done. If it doesn't get done, it ain't time yet. Mm-hmm. Now, that sounds really nice in a sermon, <laughs> but I have to battle this yeah, every for sure. single day. That, I'm with you 100%. Because there is a huge need here, and I still have this desire to help people and to meet the needs. And right. you can wear yourself slap out. And Pastor Rick talks all the time about margin, making sure you have margin and boy, do I struggle with that. It's just making sure I keep things in, in perspective and not work seven days a week, yep. um, trying to respect and honor the Sabbath. And it's not just me respecting it. It's getting other people in my sphere of influence to respect yes. my Sabbath, Yes, which is really tough because if somebody asks me to help and the only they can do it is on Monday, guess what? I'm, I'm helping there. her. Yeah. And I got I to gotta watch that. And yeah. 
so yeah, that's one of the things. So you're going to, if you start a campus in a new city, there's no end to what you can do, but you got to make sure you keep it in the proper perspective. The other thing that really helped me out, and there's a lot of resources about this, but Michael Hyatt has a, a, a program, uh, uh, the full focus planner and stuff. And it's, yep. it's every, and I saw one of our our Fort Smith pastor had this and I was peeking. I'm always looking at you people. I'm always looking at you pastors <laughs> we trying to figure that. out how you are, how you're able to do it because your campuses are just booming, you know, and how are you doing this? Cause I know yeah. you're working as hard as I am. How you, so he had this planner in his hand and it had the top three things he wanted to do today. And these other things, and you yeah. plan out your week and you plan out your month and you plan out, mm-hmm. here's the things I want to accomplish. Now, what do I need to do today? That's getting me closer to that. Because I can, there is, I can make myself busier than a one arm paper hanger and, and do absolutely nothing. And at the end of the day, I've accomplished nothing. But I was busy from sun up to, you know, well after sundown. So that really helped me. So I, I got to make sure I, I, I bow, I get on my face and empty myself of this pride. But I also mm-hmm. have to say, here's what I need to accomplish today. That's going to get me closer to having this outreach in the school, to having this starting this baseball league to starting yeah. this home again ministry to starting it. What am I doing today? This getting me closer to that. Yeah. And that has helped me because, you know, I mean, everybody that does what we do, we right. are multitaskers. Have I've got, I yeah. have three different, four different jobs that I do every day. And if I don't organize and make lists, I'll, I'll spend my entire day and accomplish nothing. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this first episode with Pastor Matt Mosler as much as I did. We will be back with you next time for the second part of this episode. Follow us on social media at Pastor Chats. And for more information on New Life Church of Arkansas, go to newlifechurch.tv. We'll see you next time.